Well, your immune system is in the middle of a very serious battle. Your accent's very thick. You ever notice your accent makes things sound worse than they, than they actually are? You could give good news and I'd still be like, what happened? Am I, I'm still dying? I'm just trying to help you. Are you mad that you died at the end of Die Hard? I don't understand <laughs> the reference. <laughs> that was good. That's a good line. So they say dying is easy, right? Comedy is hard. That was a quick look for you at Funny People with Adam Sandler and Seth Rogen. It's the latest from the man behind hits like 40-year-old Virgin and Knocked Up. But is this one actually a funny hit? And what about the rest of the August offerings? Any gems in there? David Edelstein is film critic for CBS Sunday Morning and also New York Magazine. Great to have you with us in the studio this morning. Good morning. Happy so, to be here. So you and Chris Raggy were just talking in the break. Chris said he really liked funny people. You, not so much. Uh, I, I thought it was about eight different movies in one, all of them pretty lame. But, um, <laughs> you know, it does have some funny... Um, before he has to sort of become a good person, cancer is supposed to ennoble this uh, uh, comedian schmuck played by uh, Adam Sandler, and it's supposed to make him a better person. Question is, is he going to be a better person, or is he going to be a selfish guy like he always is? And the answer is not not really, but he's he gets duller. He gets duller and duller and duller as it goes along, and then the movie shifts to uh, Judd Apatow's family. Okay. Uh, in yeah, he's Northern got the California. whole family in there for the he's cast. He's got his kids, he's got his wife, his wife, he presents his wife as the ripest, most lovely sexual object you can possibly imagine. Imagine. And wow. I, I think she's pretty hot, but I'm not sure that he really ought to be like thrusting her in our face. There really like is that. a lot going on in this movie. <laughs> uh, there is. Cancer, but comedy, kids. Cancer, comedy, kids, perhaps inappropriate. Uh, two and a half hours. Two and a half hours. Two and a half hours. You yeah. say it's too long. So even this Judd Apatow, Adam Sandler, Seth Rogen, even all of these big there names are people can't who save love it. it. There are people who love it. I think it's kind of DOA. Okay. All right. Wait for video, maybe. Next up. Yes. Julie and Julia, I can't wait to see this because I have to say I loved the book. But I always, I am always a little leery. If you love the book, will you like the movie? Well, you'll love Meryl Streep. You know, How could you not? Well, yeah, but you know, she's doing basically at first like a nightclub impersonation of Julia Child, and then somehow or other through that great voice and that weird body, she gets into her soul. She gets, she touches base with all of Julia Child's pleasure centers. So you want to see her doing everything. You want to see her cook. You want to see her laugh. You want to see her have sex. You want, you, you just never want Meryl. To leave the screen. You want to follow her everywhere as Julia So Child. she makes this movie. She makes this movie. She puts this movie into the stratosphere. It is a transcendental impersonation. It transforms the entire movie. So is this going to do for her what some other films, as incredible as she's been, have, have not been able to do? 15 Oscar nominations, as we know. Uh, not 15 wins. It's my favorite performance of hers. Wow. It's her funniest performance. It's her wittiest. And in a way, it's her freest. Because once she has the imitation down. It's like she's improvising as Julia Child. It's like a musical. It's like watching a great virtuoso musician. I love this. I can't wait to see it. Looking forward to that one. All right, up next, G.I. Joe, Rise of Cobra, which comes out next week. I don't know much about this one except for the G.I. Joe in the title. Yeah, they're not screening it for critics. It's directed by That's this guy, sign, Stephen <laughs> Summers, who is my candidate for the worst director in Hollywood. Now, I, I got death threats when I hated The Mummy and The Mummy Returns. For a lot real of people, death threats? Well, you know, saying like, you know, uh, I only wish bad things on you and your wow. family for not liking The Mummy Returns. Wow. People out there are really nuts. Can I say that? Insane? You just did. Okay. <laughs> um, and, uh, uh, and then he made Van Helsing, which took all the greatest, coolest monsters in uh, Hollywood history and made them incredibly boring. I think the guy cannot cut together an action sequence. It's all an embarrassment of riches going nowhere. So G.I. Joe is not a must-see. Well, <laughs> I, I don't know. It could be a masterpiece. But you don't we don't know. There's no screener. Good we point. don't know. Well, I guess we'll find out next week then. I hope so. David Edelstein, great to have you with us this morning. Thank Thanks you. for coming in. Inglorious Bastards, too. And that's coming out. We're yeah. out of time, but... Can I say that on TV? Inglorious Bastards? You can. I guess I did. Yes, okay. it's okay. All right. Okay. <laughs> Bye. Thanks. All right, Chris. There you go. Your summer movies.